across the fence were bugging out. They're tiny, but they're hungry, and they could be causing big damage to your plants. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. From indoor plants to outdoor gardens, certain bugs can cause problems. There are a variety of strategies for dealing with the different pests that attack our plants. For professional greenhouse growers, combating the bugs before customers take the plants home is essential for both healthy plants and happy customers. One Vermont greenhouse is keeping its plants pest free and at the same time supporting hands-on experience for Vermont students. Across the Fences, Rebecca Gollin tells us more. If there's one thing that bugs a greenhouse manager, it's bugs. Well, these bad bugs, they can bring in viruses, they deform the plants, they can make the flowers bad, distort the flowers, they just make the plant ugly, and then if you have diseases, then you'll end up having to throw the plant away. Lori King is in charge of Integrated Pest Management, or IPM, at Clausen's Greenhouse in Colchester. The company made the change from chemical to biological controls several years ago, and King has been at the forefront of implementing the new strategies. I have a lens in my hand, a magnifying lens. I am constantly looking at the plants. There are yellow sticky cards hanging up in the greenhouses. Those are yellow monitoring cards that once a week I go through and I count the cards. Everything gets recorded so I know exactly what's going on and it's the most crucial thing is to do the scouting so that you can see where your problems are so you can react. Here in Vermont, one of the main nuisance bugs that's found in many greenhouses is aphids. Aphids are small, soft-bodied insects. Um, they have these piercing, sucking mouth parts, and they pierce um, the plant tissues and they suck out the sap, which causes distortion, it can vector viruses. Um, they're extremely difficult for greenhouse managers to combat. Really want to focus on. Uh, what Cheryl Frank Sullivan is an IPM specialist with the University of Vermont Entomology Research Lab. She says that what happens is that aphids develop a resistance to chemical insecticides. They do, however, have a host of natural enemies that greenhouse growers can use to combat them. What that means is that one of the most effective strategies for keeping the bad bugs in check is using good bugs. There are hundreds and hundreds of different uh, species of aphids out there. Uh, it's very complex. Identification of them is extremely difficult. Um, Time and time again, we tell greenhouse growers that they really need to identify the species of aphids that they have that are attacking their plants because a lot of the biological control agents, especially the wasp parasitoids that attack them, are host specific and they only target certain species of aphids. This is the part where it gets pretty gross. Wasps are brought into the greenhouse to infect the aphids with their eggs. The wasp larvae grow inside the host, consuming the aphid from inside and turning it into a mummy. The larva eventually emerge from the aphid shell as an adult, ready to continue the cycle. Greenhouses can buy the wasps, but once they have some in stock, it's cheaper and not too hard to create their own. King is doing that with help from students in the Natural Resources Program at the Center for Technology in Essex. On this day, Frank Sullivan was visiting the class to share information about aphid control and IPM. We uh, learned how the wasp, how to protect our plants better by using the integrated pest management system. And we basically learned how the wasp basically go into the aphids and they hatch basically an egg into the aphid and then that eventually turns into a wasp that kills the other bugs on the plants. The tie-in with Claussen's is, is phenomenal. It allows our students to get out into the community to see a business that's engaged with us. And Tech Center instructor that, that Jason Kittridge um, initially contacted Claussen's to get tips on how to better grow poinsettias, which his students raise for an annual fundraiser. And then it goes back into the banker box so the aphids can multiply. When King needed a place away from the greenhouse to produce her biological control bugs, she reached out to Kittredge. It's been a win-win. Helping Clausen's has taught the students how to best manage their own greenhouse. It goes back to cost savings and, and what's best for the plants that we're producing. So if I don't have to apply a pesticide or an outside application onto a product that we're trying to market, 
um, the students can see the value that's added to that and hopefully the revenue that's produced from not spending the extra extra capital. Uh, it ties in uh, with the greenhouse, basically the greenhouse. We have plants that we need to protect so we can get a good profit out of them and basically have plants for people to buy and that's how we purchase more plants the next year and so it all kind of connects. King has pinpointed the type of wasp that will control the aphids at Clausen's. She and the students made these, bird cherry oat, banker baskets, which the students populate with aphids, before King takes them back to Clausen's and applies the parasitic wasp. We use cherry oat aphids um, that are specific to um, the grasses that we have, like wheat and barley, and that the aphidias are the wasps that um, lay their eggs inside them and create little mummies um, so that it kills the aphids and the wasps um, reproduce. Each week they are making new baskets for me with the oat and the barley and they put a little bit of the aphids with the grass on it and then I bring them here after those baskets have grown, they are full of aphids. I bring them here and I sit for about two weeks in a spot together where I put the aphidias on them and then once I can see those little mummies then I will take them and hang them up in the greenhouses and each of these greenhouses have four baskets in each house with a little sign so people can see what's going on and, and maybe get a little educated about it. It's a good way for greenhouses to do this so that they don't have to use pesticides. It's a hands-on project for these students with a real-world application. It's always nice to have a good background so your plants can survive at your house when you grow up. In Essex, I'm Rebecca Gullen with Across the Fence. Well, thanks, Rebecca. Joining me now is the Integrated Pest Management Manager at Clausen's, Lori King. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Judy. Now, in the video, Rebecca mentioned that there's a specific name for what the students are raising? Yes, they're raising the bird cherry oat aphid. And so that's the name of that's the bug? That's the name of the bug, yes. Talk a little bit more about why the Natural Resources Program at the center is, is raising these bugs. They are raising them for us because we have tried to raise them at Clausen's and the aphidias are so good. We had separate cages to raise these baskets in. The aphidias uh, would always get in and crash the system. So I needed a place away from Clausen's where there were no aphidias so that it could be raised and to bring it back for the aphidias. Now how do the students benefit from growing these? The students get to learn firsthand about the biocontrol and, and another method that you don't need to use pesticide and that you can use natural predators to fight the pests that we have here. And so um, do you use any other kind of banker baskets? We do. Uh, we use a banker basket called the Aureus. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this would be the Aureus for the Aureus Banker Basket. And Aureus is also known as the Minute Pirate Bug. And he is a great bug to have around because even in the immature stage, they eat aphids, they'll eat uh, thrips, they'll eat some spider mites. So they're wonderful to have in the greenhouse as well. And then if those bugs are not present to eat, he can eat on the pollen. That's why we use a type of uh, lobularia, which is a, an alyssum that's very aggressive, but it has a very high pollen count, so it'll keep them happy if there's no pest to eat. Excellent. What other biocontrols do you use? We also use nematodes. Mm -hmm. We also use um, sachets. Every basket uh, gets a sachet, and this has a predatory mite called Ambelisis cucumris, and they will eat thrips, and they will also eat uh, like broad mite, and so this will go into the basket and stay there, and they, there's a small, very tiny hole here. These are all microscopic, and they do not bother people, and they will just come out and wander about the plant looking for food to eat, and if it's touching another plant, they will just carry on and keep going. No kidding. Yes. Wow. How often do you release these biocontrols? We go through and I do a releasing once a week but we have some our baskets I can just check weekly
weekly, but I do put out other predators uh, weekly to maintain and to keep on top of it. Uh, why not just release the controls? Why the bankers? The bankers help because when you buy in, most of our predators come from Europe and they have to be chilled and come over and they're a little drowsy and this way I'm getting fresh, new, very hungry prey when they, when they come out of those bankers. Mm -hmm. And I know you have another prop you want to show us too. Yes, we have also this here which shows some of the other different uh, pests that are uh, predators that we use. Uh, we use the lacewing larvae which is great for early on we get the foxglove aphid which the banker baskets will not work on. They're bigger and they tend to drop off and move so I will get in some lacewing larvae. They are uh, great for eating up those aphids and we use aphidias, aphidolides which is another type which go after the aphids and uh, there's persimilis which is a um, um, predatory mite mm -hmm. um, which will go through and consume uh, like a two-spotted spider mite. So and you, these are actually signs that you have up at the greenhouse too to we, explain the system to folks. Yes, yes and every basket has um, a sign hanging on it saying uh, trying to help and to educate people and especially the aureus baskets I do have a, a written sign saying that it's a host plant and that about the pollen and, and it's good to have around. Do you get a lot of questions from folks who come in? Um, I try to point out to them some of them might kind of look at it and wonder so we do try to educate the people as well so that they, they know what's going on and why there's grass baskets hanging that's why there's a sign on them so if they do look at them they can see why, what they're there for. Now what should a customer expect when they take home a greenhouse plant? Well when they take home a plant they'll know that it's had some biocontrols put on it that we've gone through. Um, they might occasionally find a little golden mummy on their plant which would be uh, from a, an aphidias has already come in and he's... That's a good sign. That's a good sign. He's made a mummy out of it and that that will emerge in two weeks and you'll have a whole new uh, aphidias looking for uh, more aphids. So if they buy this, the plants, they could be taking home more biologicals to use in their garden. Good bugs. Good good bugs to fight those bad bugs. Any professional tips for pest management in, in your own home? In your own home, you just want to, you really need to scout and scouting means just picking up your plant and taking a look at it. Most bugs like the undersides of the leaves so just take a look at it and see what's going on and you can tell if the leaves are crinkled or there's something going on with it. You know you know what the plant looks like so mm -hmm. try to look at it and just look, watch it and see and if you have a nice clean healthy plant you're great. And what if you don't though what should you do? You would want to try to it, normally the great thing about putting things outside is we have a lot of natural predators that will come up and um, take care of things for us out outside. So we're pretty lucky in that respect. So if you've got a house plant that's been in the house all winter long, you air can, it out. <laughs> you can put it, I have done that. I have found spider mite on some of my mm -hmm. house plants. I've put it outside and then another spider has come along, made a web and has eaten them up. Now, what are people looking for? I mean, are there any trends in gardening now that the people seem to be leaning toward? Well, they certainly um, are interested in not having something that's been sprayed because they do want to save the bees and the butterflies. So we are definitely trying to move away from that. And um, we, like I said, we will do nematoding, which will help with fungus gnats and thrips. So just more of trying to, once you stay fresh, and a good, healthy, clean plant is better to fight off those pests and diseases as well. Mm -hmm. And now um, the greenhouse must be full of plants this time of year. You must be very busy. Yes, yes it is. We are, we're hopping with uh, there, but we take the time to continue to look and scout. Scouting is key for keeping the uh, program in check to go through and to see where your problems are so you can react before it becomes a major problem. But most of the time, the banker baskets are in place so when I go through and scout, I could find these little mummies already where the aphidias has already found the aphids. So they're already off and working and finding them before we do. So that's great. That's, that's It's wonderful to see it working. So how can our viewers contact uh, Claussen's or 
find out more? They can go to our website, which is www.clausens.com, or they can call the 1-800-287-2361. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. I feel better already about the plants. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. It was a pleasure. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.